everyone. All right, so today um, we are not taking any more deer, obviously, as you know. We are just cutting. These are all the deer we got left. Um, I'm probably just gonna do a few videos here and there of, you, of me cutting some stuff and um, explaining any weird things I see, showing what happens when you shoot uh, through a front shoulder. You know, just the basic things um, that I might not have touched on. Um, kind of a uh, ending of the deer season videos. Um, then we'll be moving on soon to ice fishing. There's already a few ponds in, in Maine, probably more than a few um, that have frozen over. One we saw yesterday has four inches of ice already on it. So we're already planning some ice fishing trips. Um, hopefully if everything stays cold and uh, yeah, so Stay tuned for the rest of the videos. Once again, sorry about those black lines. I can't, nothing I can do about it. It's the LED lighting. Um, but we'll get you some video on a little information on some cool things and we'll go from there. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Enjoy the video. And we'll see you soon. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have a well-aged deer. She's pretty good. Um, a lot of you probably think that it's gross, but that it's pretty good um could be a little bit darker but it all depends on the age um i mean not the age but how long the deer was aged before they brought it to us and how long it's been in our cooler um but anyways yeah we're gonna set you down right here i'm gonna cut these front shoulders off if you can even see it but you can't oh there you go i got, got a cameraman i got a cameraman now so we're gonna take this front shoulder we're gonna cut it right off put it up there then we go down here and we we hit up this other front shoulder. We get that right off. Which is deer's age pretty good. I mean it's not slimy and bloody like it could be. Okay, so then what I, what I normally do is I'll come right in here. And then we go in right in and we get that inner out. my table because I do that. Once we get this in or out. Okay, then we'll spin right around. We'll go in to the back strap. Usually there's not so much fat on them. There hasn't been anyways this year, but there's a little point. I've showed this before, but we go right in, go right down the back bone, all the way down to the neck. Try not to slice into the neck because sometimes they want neck roasts, which neck roasts are super delicious. And uh, Dustin that works here, his daughter just can't have enough of them. She wants one for Christmas. Then we just go right down the side of the back strap like that. Now I'll put that over there. Then I'll end up taking the other one out. And then we'll take off the hind quarter um, and then we'll do some cutting over there at the table. Um, I'm going to try to show you guys exactly how I do it, give you the best example I can. Um, I know in a lot of my videos I skip from this part to that part. So if you don't see something in this video that, that I did, then you can go back to my other videos um, and you can go right to the playlist and hit meet room and you can see all the different videos that I've made throughout the season and former seasons. So we'll see you guys in a minute. All right, well, howdy and welcome. Okay, so I've done this video before, but I'm gonna do it again because people want to see. Let me make sure I got you so you can see. All right, and it doesn't look like I got, oh, there are some black lines and I apologize, but all right, so anyways, first thing I do is I come over here there's a seam 
that gets right up underneath there. You can put your finger right up underneath that. You peel this cap off. This is what we do here. And this is the reason I make these videos is so you guys can see how we do things at Kenny's Cuts. And we have a lot of people sometimes that don't understand, um, like they think they don't get enough meat back, stuff like that, but you get back what you get. Um, it, you know, I've seen posts where people say they got 70 pounds of meat back off in a 107 pound deer. Well, that's almost impossible unless you sat there for five days taking every centimeter, every speckle of meat off of the, the deer. So anyways, this right here is just a fat cap. Not worth anything, can't do nothing with it. What I like to do is I go on this side, there's a thicker seam on one side than the other. I go up underneath there with my knife and I run, I run the knife along my fingertips. It's super dangerous if you don't do this like I do all the time. So this is the easiest way. I don't go through this cat because if I do, I'm gonna slice right into my fingers and it won't be fun. But I go right down to the very end of that and then I just peel the whole thing off. Everybody does it different. When I'm done, there's barely anything left on that. And that will go over to him and he'll shave the rest of the meat off that because your back strap's some pretty good uh, meat. So anyways, then we end up with this. And I got a little seam here and some little bit of silver skin on that side. So I'll flip it right over. And then you can see about that line. And I'm gonna take that right off without taking as much of the back strap as I can off. And then we got this, which will go over to him and he'll clean that all up for burger. Then I go right down through. That's not gonna be useful for nothing. Shave this off. I get this little edge here. That will go over to him to pick through. Then I, I, I gotta always clean my table because if you see right here on the table, you get all these little speckles and pieces of stuff. Sometimes there's a little piece of hair stuff like that and you don't want to get that into the customer's meat so I'll scrape my table down repeatedly throughout the day and you didn't even see most of it but you can see right there on the end of my scraper that's all the stuff that would have been laying on the meat I don't want to send that home with the meat that we package so now that I got the table clean I'll put this back over here when I flip it back over the seam I cut off the other side it usually leaves a little piece on this side so I'll, I'll shave that off lightly. And then I got some silver skin on this side. So we'll just lightly go up underneath of it, take it off like so. And then when I'm done doing all that, I have a nice clean back strap. Now this one is going to be quarter inch. So quarter inch, we'll just go down through, hit it quarter inch. Now it's not an, an exact measurement of quarter inch. It's pretty much all dead on because I've cut so many, but you're going to have some that are going to be a little bit over, a little bit less, but it's just about getting it as close as you can. And when you have hundreds of deer that you're doing, you can't measure every single cut every time. But I get pretty close and I've had lots of, lots of people um, that compliment us. So, as long as people like it, I'm, we're gonna keep doing it. Stupid little piece of fur on my finger, won't go away. But anyways, that's pretty much your back strap. You just cut them all. I don't know, make sure you can still see what I'm doing. I'll show you the done product. These little pieces of fur that are coming from somewhere. I have no clue. You just, I mean, like when I'm cutting, I watch for fur on it. When the guys are over here packaging, they're constantly looking at the meat as they're packaging it, make sure there's no fur. Um, when they're doing the burger, they make sure they look for fur. 
Uh, when it goes into the grinder, they, go, they do another scan over through it, make sure there's no fur. It's a, it's a very long process, but we have done it so much that we've got it down to a, almost a science. And then that is your quarter inch back strap. And then we'll take out some trays. And I like to put equal portions on a tray, about that much on a tray per one, unless they specify they want something different. I mean, I can show you one little piece of back strap. I mean, that's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful steak for whoever's gonna eat it. And then I'll just put that on a tray and we'll send it over here to the back strap shelf where Kenny or Nicholas or Dustin Usually we'll be right there to package it. And that is your back strap. Now we're gonna move on. All right, we're recording. And as you can see, Kenny, if you can see him, I don't know if you can, but he's over there eating his normal breakfast bowl. You know, old, old people have to stay on a regiment. You got it. How old is he, like 72? Yeah, 76, I think. Wow, I aged four years this week. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna get on to doing an inner. As you can see, I got the inner here, it's pretty dirty. They do have a cap, just like the back strap. You can see my thumb right here and where I'm peeling. I usually just get up underneath there and, and I peel it. And when you peel that cap, it pretty much takes all that nasty off. Now I will throw this over to him, but I won't put it in the pile of the other stuff because of the first oven. He will pick through that to get the little bits of uh, meat out of it that are good for burger. So now, we got this inner, and I'm sorry about the black lines. Like, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, it's from the lights, but you can see that it still needs a little bit of cleaning up. So, I'll do that. Hopefully, you guys can see. Try to get you a little closer. There you go. All right. So there's the the key with this is to not sink your knife too deep. Just take off a little bit, that top thin layer, and a good sharp knife will help you to um, get that very well done, just like that. Because remember, you took that cap off already, so that took off all the nasties, or well, most of it anyways. And then you wanna make sure you flip it over because sometimes there's a, a piece of a fat cap on the bottom that you wanna get off, because nobody wants to eat that. We like to have our product here um, really nice and clean and good. And if you could smell it, you would know that it's aged well because it has a really distinct smell when they're aged. Not a bad smell, it's a good smell. Um, okay, and they want their back, their inners quarter inch too. So we'll just go right down through it just like we did with the back strap. And sometimes it will stick to your gloves. We'll just go right down through and give them a quarter inch slice. Yeah, Dustin just showed up. That's the uh, other guy that helps here at the shop. And we will slice right down through the back strip, I mean the inner, and get it quarter inch, just like so. And then we will take that and we'll throw that on a tray. So sometimes it's longer than a tray. So what I'll do is I'll put it on the tray, but I'll put it opposite directions and it'll, it looks nice and neat that way. So that is your inner. And then we'll move on to doing the hind quarter. I'll finish up that other back strap for the inner, and then we'll move on to the hind quarter. So we'll see you in a second. All right, so now we have a hind quarter. I'm gonna break that down for you. What I do is, is what I do, so you can do it my way or you can watch other videos and do it the way they do it. This is the easiest way we do it. So I just go right down the seam here and you can open it right up, cut along this seam. Then I spin it a little bit. And you can get your finger right up underneath here. And you find that there's a seam between the muscles. Do not cut your finger. 
We open that right up. Pull it back like this. Cut those, that fat and all that out of there. Go right up under here. And then you get the, to the very tip of the eye round. Then you cut along in that seam, which I'll show you. Right here, there's your eye round, there's your bottom round, there's the top round, and there's your tip. Cut right along there. You don't want to lose the meat, so I'll put you back over here. Cut right in there, and then you got that eye round and your bottom round. Then what I do is I spin, you can see the seam right here along the calf muscle. And I cut right along that. And the last time I did this video, I had some guy say, hey, you cut off all the top button, blah, 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 immature hour. Well, you can say what you want to say. I don't care. Um, tell me I'm an amateur, but I've cut 300 deer almost this year. And that's not even including all the other years. So I've cut thousands of deer. Um, the way I do it, and I've all in the all the time that I've been cutting meat, I've only had well, I think two complaints, and it was just because I cut something the wrong way that that they didn't want it. Um, they specified it a certain way they wanted, it and I failed to do that. But shit happens sometimes, especially when you've been doing it all season and you get tired like we are. So I also had some some negative comments about. Um, about us getting done before black powder season, but you gotta understand we've done uh, like 29 moose, 46 bear, and then we're almost 300 deer, you know, and we're a four man crew. We get tired, we are human, and we really don't get a lot of deer during uh, black powder. So unfortunately, if you're gonna get a deer during black powder, you're gonna have to find somewhere else to bring it because we would like to, have a successful season and be done and, and move on to our own things in our own lives so but anyways yeah so now i got those all sectioned out you got your your bottom round your eye round you got your um new york sirloin you got your freaking top round and your tip and then we'll break those down and uh clean them up and get those on trays all right so first thing we're gonna do we're gonna start with the, the tip. I'll take and cut that cap off. They just want quarter inch steaks, so all the scrap from that will go right over across from me to these guys and they will trim it all up into burger. And we clean it completely up. A lot of companies do not. They, they will trim it like, like this, I'll show you. They get that outside piece off and we'll leave it like that and send it but we do not here we clean it completely so that you can put it right into your frying pan and what's the point of bringing your meat to the, to a, a butcher shop and having to take it home and clean it again before you can cook it like that to me is defeats the whole purpose of paying somebody to process your meat Most of it will, not most of it, but the, this bottom piece goes in the burger. We like to clean out all these veins and stuff like that. Cause nobody, well, nobody wants to eat that. I don't care who you are. And if you do want to eat it, then more power to you. But I, I wouldn't eat that. Then I can lay it down nice and flat. And I can cut this end off to flush it up. That will go in the burger. Um, then it's quarter inch. So we, I'll turn so you guys can watch me cut, but just go right along. This is a, sometimes an easy muscle to cut, and then sometimes it's tough to cut because it moves around so much. But I usually have my fingers just right. I flatten it out so it cuts pretty good. And we just want to get quarter inch cuts all the way across. Just like that. And then that last piece will go in the burger because then we put it on a tray and that is amazing. It goes on to here. Then we move on over here to your uh, top round. There's a big 
bunch of veins and silver skin on the back of it. First thing I do is chop into that, cut off this edge. That's all veins and stuff, and that will be gone through for burger. There's a big vein right here on the edge that I always chop right out. Now, if you do this a different way, or if you don't like the way we do it, then you're more, you, you have more power to you to take your your meat to a different meat cutter or uh, one that does it the way you like. But most people love the way we cut our, cut our meat. So um, it's been said that once your wife has our meat, yeah, she always wants to come back. <laughs> but I had to throw that one in there. Just a little inside joke. I like to have fun. I like to enjoy people and I really enjoy all the comments and stuff I get from some of you great people. So, anyways, we cut this cap off without taking too much of, the, of it off. We'll go right up underneath there, clean it up nice and neat. Get those veins out of there. Nobody wants to eat a vein, trust me. Once you, if you leave it on the steak when you cut it, it's gonna shrivel right up in the pan. It's gonna make the steak shrivel right up. And then when you go to bite, it's gonna be tough and not enjoyable. So we got that pretty much clean and the bottom pretty much clean. Some little veins on that edge. Okay, so then we go quarter inch again. Now this one, it sort of goes like this. So what I do is I sort of bend it so that the lines go straight. So you're cutting across the grain, which if you could see me because this camera's not even on me. But anyways, so then we go quarter inch with that one. And like I said, this is how we process the meat here. And we want to make it as enjoyable for you as you can. You know, if you're sitting out your ice in your ice shack and you gotta cook something. You don't wanna have to pull out a knife, trim all kinds of silver skin off, and then find a place to put that inside your ice shack, have a big bloody mass, and when it's easier to just cut a package open and throw it in a pan with some butter and then enjoy it in 10 or 15 minutes or however long it takes for you to cook it. Um, and then just put your trash into a bag and, and then carry it out without having to worry about you know, blood and, and all that. And then we put it on a tray, like that. Okay, and then we'll move on to the tip. Now this is controversial, the way we do it. So we clean it up quite a bit. A lot more than most places, I would say. Um, we don't, there's an edge here. A lot of places would leave it just like this and cut it up for you and leave that fat cap and stuff, but we just do not do that. We cut this edge off like that and we clean it right up like this. So basically all, what, we're, what you're seeing is that we like to clean everything. Put a little bit of extra effort in it for you to enjoy it better. On the bottom here, there's a little piece right here. We take that piece off. And then I know probably there's gonna be a lot of you that are like, ah! but too bad, that's how we do it. And I'm gonna keep saying that because I like to. But anyways, once we're done, it looks like about like that. And then we will cut it quarter inch. There's still a little bit on it, like as far as fat, but that's what it's gonna be for this particular muscle. Then we go quarter inch. And it probably don't look quarter inch on the camera. I, I've noticed that when I watch my own videos sometimes. Um, but it's just some reason the GoPro makes it look thicker than it is. And we just go right along like that. Pick that whole thing up. Put it on our tray. Put it on him and he'll package it. Then we got your eye round and your bottom round. Now what I do is I cut right across here, take that eye round right off, set it off to the side. That's all fat. Okay, there's a, there's a piece of silver skin right here. Try to get up underneath of it without taking too much of the primal away. And then I shave it right, whoop, 
like that. Um, that goes like that. Then, it's hard to show, but I, there's more little piece of silver skin. I go up underneath that, and I go right down, and I cut the end off like this. So I shave the fat, that. Then you got a cap on this side. So what I do is I go up underneath that cap, and if I'm going too fast, you can pause the video or you can go back and, and just watch it over again and do it step by step. Um, but I go up underneath like that. When you get over the side, I sort of cut into that fat a little bit. So I don't want to take too much off. And that's what I end up with. And I'll throw it over there like with everything else and people trim through it and get whatever else meat, whatever meat is on it off for your burger. And then I have one little more piece right there and I, I, I usually chop that off. And then we got, comes up with this. And this has a weird angle. So if you can see the lines, I got them going across. And I will cut against the green all the way up through that. And I'm gonna have to hurry because the chipmunk song for Christmas is coming on. <laughs> and I wanna listen to it. So then we just cut against the grain all the way through. Just like so. And, it, and it, that angle changes, so you gotta change with the angle to keep it right. And I welcome your comments. Um, I know I'll probably get belligerent comments, I always do. People always think they know more than everybody else. It's okay. But I hope everybody enjoys the video and the way we do things here. I've done these videos before. And the last one I got left here is the eye round. There's a cap on the back of it. Take that cap. I shave it off. Then you got a fat, a, another little piece of meat here with fat. So what I do is I go right up underneath that, come right down the end. Just like so. That goes over there for him. Clean up just a hair more. Take that silver skin off that end. And then you got this on the back side. You can almost grab that. And you can peel that right off and trim it right up. And then just go quarter inch on that. And that, my friends, is how we do the back strap inners and the hind quarters. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and the front shoulders uh, go over to them unless somebody wants a front shoulder roast or front shoulder steaks. Um, it'll go right over to them and they will um, chop that into burger. So we'll get some footage of doing some sausages and some of the packaging and we'll go from there. All right, folks. So. Right now he's got to do, what is it, 10 pounds of breakfast? Yep. All right, pounds. so, so we got to do 10 pounds of breakfast sausage. So he's going to weigh it. And he's two more pounds. So actually, four. Then you need to make it for four more pounds because you're going to subtract the tray. He knows what he's doing. I don't need to tell him that. He's only done it all season long. <laughs> okay, then he brings it over here to the grinder. And then he'll run that through once. And it's okay to have a little bit of silver skin like that. Because that will grind right up. And then once you cook it, it'll disappear.
And then once that runs through, we'll put it back up there, dump it in, and then he will get his breakfast seasoning, which I think is from the It's maple. And that's the seasoning. And then he'll cover it. And we pretty much do it by eye. And we like to make sure how much is left in the package. Yeah, I, I would just put, yeah, I just put it all on. There you go. Here comes the sneezes. And here comes the breakfast sauce and sneezes. Stand back. And then he'll mix that all in and grind it. Sausage. We don't do casings or links or sticks, sticks like that. Um, we could, we all know, like, well, me and Kenny know how to make it, um, but uh, it's too time consuming. We only have a five, uh, four man crew, so we don't bother with that stuff. Um, if people want that, they could. But there's other places around in the area that will make that for you, or you can do it at home. And that's that. And then he's gonna take it, throw it on some trays. We do roughly about a pound on each tray. Let's see how well he did. <laughs> a little light. Oh, uh, that feels about right. Let's we'll see. One pound, one point six. He did good. Only because he's on video. Then over here we got our mask off. Say hello, <laughs> Bubba. And so that's a, pretty much a continuous process. So when he gets ready to do the vacuum sealer, I will show you guys that. And I've, like I said, I've done this before. I've showed you guys all this before, but I just figured I'd do it again. Uh, make another video. It's almost the end of the season. We're on the final countdown. The deer are getting smaller. We are at those two slips right there. And then we go back up to the top and across. And yeah, it's flying. If that's all that's left. The core has been full for days, so don't mind the floor. That's what we got left for deer. They're all aged really well, and they're cutting up really nice, and we've got lots of compliments on what we've done so far. So yeah, he's gonna do the vacuum sealing right now. I'm gonna take those gloves off when you do that. Yeah? Yeah, because you're getting you bur you're getting burger all over the bag and then it'll be all over this. Huh. I never take them off. Should though, because it makes it a mess inside there. He didn't know that, but he does now. Yeah, and then we can fit about four of them inside there. And this is the back packet, so I'm going to close the lid. And voila, then they go on to the scale and then into the bags and they'll look like that. 
Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's just a little tutorial of our meat shop. Um, we're getting to the end of the season and then we're off to better things. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. Keep on naturing. Peace.